Today's story was written by Reddit user Farm Witch 4275 Great days and glorious victory. My name is Spifflemonk, and welcome to my Let's Play. Today, at the recommendation of my physician, I am going to play a game that almost landed me in what humans call the Funny Farm. A game called Teardown. Now, I shall not beat around the bush. This game almost drove me insane. It was the catharsis, I believe is the term. Spifflemonk starts the game up and comes to the main menu, clicking on the campaign button, starting a new save. The game starts up with the player character standing outside a construction site, a run-down building with various empty boxes laying everywhere. Spiffle quickly demonstrates the game's physics engine by picking up an empty pallet and throwing it away with an odd chuckle. Oh gods, I enjoy this. Far too much judging by what happened last time I played this. So, in any case, I shall be playing the campaign. Now, let's see. Ah, here we are. First mission is... Destroy a house outside the Evertides Mall. Right. Spiffle collects his equipment, a sledgehammer, fire extinguisher, and spray can, then heads to the computer, starting the first mission. Spiffle loads into the level and laughs in a rather disturbing manner as he uses his sledgehammer to whack a few clumps of grass and knocks down a tree. <laughs> oh shit, I'm here for a thing, aren't I? Right, um, have to... destroy this? Okay then, um... Uh, what are these red things here? The game shows a prompt on the screen. Propane tanks explode when thrown. As he approaches the red cylinders on the ground, he laughs in a rather disturbing manner as he picks up one and tosses it towards the house, causing a small explosion, destroying part of the wall and window. <laughs> Gods, this is fun! Very little dialogue follows as Spiffle begins to laugh in a rather disturbing way as he demolishes the house. He uses the propane tanks to destroy the chimney, then whacks away at the walls with the sledgehammer until the house is completely destroyed. Spiffle breathes hard and fast for several moments, an unmistakable smile on his face as he collects himself and heads for the van, finishing the mission. Righty then, why am I finding this so... fun? I don't get it, but god it's fun. Why is it so fun? Oh, I have a new mission I suppose. Um, hmm. Apparently I'm in a bit of trouble. That house was a historical landmark of some kind. Apparently I have to go to a place called Lee Chemicals and steal some computers or get sent to prison for destroying the house. Oh dear. Well, guess I have to do it then. Spifflemonk begins the mission and finds himself at the entrance to a chemical factory. He suddenly laughs in a very sadistic manner as he notices various things he remembers from his first time ever playing the game in this very map. Ooh, gods, I remember this! I played sandbox mode the first time here, and I spent two solid hours disassembling every single solitary pixel of this entire map. Alas, I must do the mission, so guess I'll wait. Now, look at the map and objectives. Guess I'm going there. Spiffle heads towards a small shed nearby and bashes the door open with a chuckle. He enters the building, grabs one of the computers as his objective, and moves to the next objective on his list. He heads into a larger house, picking up the computer on the second floor. The last objective is high up in a corner office in the factory building. There does not seem to be a way in, so Spiffle explores a bit, encountering a boom lift. He drives it around for a bit before smashing it into the office above him. Oh, oh dear, I think I... Wait, I can get up there now, yes! Spiffle climbs up the boom lift and grabs the computer, completing the mission. He heads outside and back to the van, finishing the mission and returning to his home. Well, it seems I have another mission at Lee Chemicals again, this time to check login devices of some kind. Apparently there is some kind of alarm system, so I guess I'll have to deal with that. Right then, uh, let's go! 
Spiffle starts the mission and finds himself outside of Lee Chemicals once again. He uses his newly acquired blowtorch to break open the lock to the front gate and the first objective. He enters the building, a chemical refinery unit of some kind, and heads upstairs. He grabs the first target and a timer starts as the alarm goes off. Oh shit! I wasn't supposed to do that, was I? Oh no, where is the next objective? Spifflemont quickly tries to complete his mission and heads to the next objective. His efforts are absolutely futile as he fumbles and bumbles his way through obstacles with his limited equipment and fails the mission as the timer runs out and the noise of helicopter blades fill his ears. Oh, well, shit. That complicates things. In any case, that's all we have for for today. Goodbye, all. Spifflemonk sighs happily as he returns to his player home and begins throwing objects about. Top comment. What exactly happened the last time you played this game? Funny Farm? Did you enjoy such a cathartic experience that you were institutionalised or something? In any case, good video. Looking forward to more. Great days and glorious victory. My name is Spiffle Monk and welcome to my Let's Play. Today, we are back to Teardown, the catharsis game, the relaxation game. I do not know what it is about this game that makes me so strange, but I love it. Today, we shall complete our objective and finish Lee Chemicals Part 1. Then, maybe we will have a bit of fun with mods. Maybe. Let's begin. The channel intro plays and Spiffle quickly gets into it, starting up the campaign and entering Lee Chemicals. He starts to try and analyse the situation more closely, but is distracted by destructible objects and ends up setting a shed on fire by throwing a propane tank at it. He notices a new bar in his HUD rapidly filling up. Oh, what's that fire alarm? Will that start up the- oh shit. The bar fills up rapidly, setting off the fire alarm. Spiffle panics and tries to get the first objective marker, only to immediately fail the mission. Without commentary, he goes back into his home base, restarts the mission and re-enters Lee Chemicals. The camera on his face shows the sheer amount of willpower he has to use, veins bulging out of his forehead and hands visibly shaking as he restrains himself from destroying anything. Why? 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 Spiffle keeps repeating this statement as he begins to meticulously plan his route, using the spray can to plan and plot his route, using the sledgehammer to break open roofs and walls. He sees a propane tank and has to physically move his camera away from it to stop himself from picking it up. Finally, after about 10 minutes of him working hard, he finally quick saves and starts the timer with the first objective. Oh gods, I hope this works. I planned it. I planned everything. If this fails, I will be very, very... <laughs> a vein visibly pulses in Spiffle's forehead, owing to how tense he is, and he starts the sequence. He grabs the first heist target in the Northeast Chemical Processing Building and charges downstairs to a door on the right. The door leads to a gangplank connecting two structures together. Spiffle jumps down from the pathway and weaves through a series of cargo containers, turning as fast as he can and heading upstairs to a storage building with a forklift. He dodges and weaves through obstacles and heads upstairs to grab the second target. Yes! Yes! I'm doing it! I'm doing... 20 seconds! Spiffle panics even more than he already is and charges towards his next objective. He moves through a doorway he opened earlier. Using the carcass of a car, he drove into the river to make himself a bridge to cross and enters the last building, climbing stairs to grab target 3. He quickly zooms back downstairs and gets into the escape vehicle with 2 seconds to spare. Yes! 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 Oh gods! Spiffle is visibly shaking. He is sweating bullets and veins are visibly pulsing in his head. Why, why am I shaking so much? L look! Spiffle brings his hands up. They are shaking like he's in an earthquake. Why am I sweating? It's... it's cold here. Well, why are my hearts beating so hard? Spiffle holds a sweaty hand to his chest, 
feeling his double heartbeat going wild. One can visibly see his chest rising and falling in response to his heart going crazy. Spiffle momentarily grabs a camera, aiming it at his face, staring the viewer dead in the eyes as his shaky hands try to center and focus the camera. What the fuck did you humans make me do? What did you do to me? What is this game? Video simply cuts with no channel intro. Top comment. Holy shit, are human video games like crack to aliens? That's just like mission number two, and Spiff had that kind of reaction? Is he gonna be okay? Great days and glorious victory. My name is Spiffle Monk, and... Welcome to my Let's Play. After a much needed hiatus, I'm back here with Teardown. My physician has strongly advised me not to play this, but I am somewhat stressed. So, I will technically follow his orders and simply enjoy the destructive experience. Maybe I will play the heist aspect some over time. Anyway, let us begin! Spiffle opens the main menu and clicks on the Mod Manager button. Several mods are already active indicating he has play-tested it before off-camera. Several well-recognized mods such as Thor's Hammer, Thermite Cannon, Breaching Charges, Meteor Strike and AC-130 mod are active as well as several maps that are still there from way back in the game's early dev stages. Right, surprisingly enough, the current publisher of this game sent me an email the other day giving me recommendations on some of the more popular maps the game has. One such is the first map we play, called Human Playground. Let's go for it then! Spiffle starts the map, being offered several options. He picks the normal option and goes wide-eyed. He starts in a house and bashes the door open with his sledgehammer. He ignores the world around him and spends a good 10 minutes with an oddly disturbing smile on his face as he meticulously dismantles the interior of a small brick house with just the hammer. Finally, he opens the door and steps outside. Oh my gods, what is... what? The map is a huge flat white playground full of voxel models of human figures with strange expressions and moustaches. To the left is a huge billboard style collage of all the map contributors, featuring the flags of the countries they came from, standing behind them. Other human tubers who played the map or featured it the game's three developers and the map's creator itself, including one of its two modders astride a voxel beast of some kind. Oh dear, oh dear, I can't destroy anything on this map, destroying humans, even facsimiles, just… that's just unthinkable. I can't do this, I can't… Spiffle's train of thought derails as he accidentally selects his rifle, putting a bullet into one of the strange pendulum devices nearby. Smacking into the rear of one of the giant mustachioed humanoid figures, sending it flying. It rolls to the side and shows that the interior is just as detailed as the rest of it, and he can see the fully destructible model. Rib cage, spinal cord, brain, every single part of this human is fully modelled, even on the inside. The model lands on the ground, impaled on a bed of spikes. Oh, oh my, this is. Uh, oh my goodness. I shouldn't be doing this. Spiffle, visibly shaken, aims his weapon at the next target, seemingly involuntarily, and sends a hammer pendulum with a sharp edge careening towards another dummy. The hammer hits the target, splitting it in half, sending dozens of parts flying everywhere. Half the dummy flies upwards, while the other flies downwards, making the top of the torso splat in front of Spiffle. Humans actually enjoy this? Spiffle stares into the camera. That all too familiar blank stare of death looks right into the viewer's soul. The next thing Spiffle encounters is a floating row of six models. Each one is flowing above some kind of swinging ball on a chain, floating above it. Spiffle shoots the human figures on the top and visibly jerks his hand off his mouse control as the models fall. They collapse on top of each other and instantly disintegrate as the swinging cannonball smashes into them. Why? Why can't I stop? Why did I do that? Spiffle looks at his hand and the mouse and stares blankly at the camera again. 
Something is very clearly wrong, almost as if some unknown force is guiding his hand. Spiffle approaches one of the taller models and uses the flamethrower to set its crutch on fire. He stands there for a solid 10 minutes just watching the figure catch fire and burn. He approaches the figure after the fire goes out and marvels at the sight of all internals except the skeleton are gone. Why? Why am I doing... Why is this so... Why? Spiffle's demeanour changes, half happy, half terrified, as he seems to lose control of himself and begins to destroy everything around him. He uses a particular weapon called the Atomic Rifle on one of the larger models and his eyes regain their sparkle as the model completely disintegrates from multiple points, crumbling to the ground. He begins to laugh here and there, letting out a small chuckle here and there. He approaches two models, attached by a long chain, and hits one, causing it to fly across the map, impacting the other one at high speed. <laughs> Spiffle comes across a human model lying on a bed with a bladed device around it. A device the rest of us know as a guillotine. He shoots the blade with his gun, and the blade slices the model's head clean off, letting it tumble to the ground. The sight makes Spiffle wretch a bit, but some unknown force compels him to keep going. Spiffle begins laughing hysterically on encountering a vehicle, and some models that look like zombies. He drives the vehicle around, destroying absolutely everything he can, until eventually his office door is bashed open and Spiffle is once again dragged off into the darkness by authorities. Top comment. You feel that, Spiff? You feel it? It's called catharsis. I wonder why he's so adverse to killing humans, though. Wonder why he's so scared of that. We sure as hell aren't. <laughs>